It's been almost a year since Brian Michael Bendis made waves in the comic book community by switching teams from Marvel to DC. But is Superman everything it's cracked up to be? What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is an IRA review, the show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something you need to go back to your comic book shop for. What I'm going to be talking about today is Superman number seven. So this sees the actual return of Jonathan Kent. Jonathan Kent came back in issue number six, but this is him telling the story and getting reintroduced to his long-lost mother, and us starting to find out what exactly happened out there in space. But... Let's just stop talking about this here because this is my first real foray back into Superman because I was a real big fan of Tomasi's run and Brian Michael Bendis kind of rubbed me the wrong way with his Man of Steel series as well as the first issue of Superman. So let's dive in and, well, see what he has in store for me. As I sit here reading Superman number seven for the second time, third time even, I'm still looking for redeeming qualities. The way the book starts out with Superman hugging his son, obviously this isn't something you can jump into without having some previous knowledge of Superman. And I believe that's the way that Brian Michael Bendis decided to, to really design the whole series. Superman and action comics are complementary pieces. If you miss out on one of those things, you might not be getting the whole story. But if you've got people picking up a Superman book for the first time, they have to have some sort of context. And when that context is provided, it's not necessarily the clearest. We get a short uh, explanation, Superman second-guessing why his son is now 17 years old instead of, you know, 10 to 12 like he was before. And it, it doesn't necessarily matter because Superman is so happy to have his son back after three weeks. So it feels far too convenient to take him out of the writing of the book and then bring him back in approximately three weeks in real time later and then have him aged up to 17 years old. It's like, hey, I don't want to deal with writing for a child, so I'm going to make him a teenager, which I'm a little bit more familiar with, but I don't necessarily know if that's the correct motivation. And then also we've got the portrayal of Lois Lane in here. So when we first see Lois, she's in her bathrobe and she's typing away, but she's like, oh, that's how you spell received. She is a prominent and pro prolific journalist, one of the most recognizable newspaper reporters and authors in the world when it comes to these things. That's maybe something that she would say to herself, but it feels like a throwaway joke on the character. And that's just the beginning of the problems that I'm finding with Lois Lane as a character. And partway through this book, I, you know, about page nine, page 10 or so, I start to feel like Lois Lane feels. She's like, oh no, I missed everything. And that's talking about the youth of her son. With John being aged up from his preteen years to 17 without us ever seeing anything and relying on recaps and possibly potential stories that are being told inside a universe or a situation that Brian Michael Bendis created, it becomes a, a place where this character has essentially been thrown away. I don't necessarily see any kind of value in having John here, especially when we've got the return of Connor Kent inside the Young Justice series. There's a lot of really conflicting feelings when it comes to this. There is so much potential to write Jonathan Kent's stories and write great situations between Superman, his wife, and his son, and those familial moments that I really enjoyed in Tomasi and Mankey and Gleason's run on Superman in during the Rebirth series. And with those kind of really just kind of thrown out, baby with the bathwater style, it really hurts my perception of this Superman series. It doesn't give me any reasons to like it and just more reasons to dislike it. The other thing is we arrive on Jor-El's spaceship, we see an unconfident Lois Lane, like, oh, I don't know why I should be out in deep space. She is easily one of the most ferocious people, one of the most, one of the strongest lead female characters inside the DC universe, without being an actual hero herself. When we talk about what she's capable of, I mean, inside the Tomasi and, and Gleason run, we saw her don the Hellbat armor in defense of her family against the Eradicator, and then also so when uh, issue number 34 of the Superman Rebirth run, she went to Apocalypse. They were in during the Imperious Rex or Imperious Lex arc. She was so badass, she became an honorary member of the Female Furies. And now she's 
kind of cowering and wincing at the idea of being in deep space. And when she goes to this alien environment, we see her kind of being put off by not necessarily understanding how important her husband is to the rest of the galaxy. If anybody is going to understand how important Superman is to society and societies around the known universe, Lois is going to be the one that knows those things. She's going to be intimate with those details that have been passed on by her husband to her. The, the interaction with Lobo feels, you know, insignificant, but really the poor characterization of Lois Lane, the fact that she lets her son go off to completely destroy this slave encampment and feeling like she wasn't necessarily needed, it's difficult to put into words, but I'd say that Brian Michael Bendis' portrayal of Lois Lane is lackluster at best, and he doesn't do the character any justice in this, uh, you know, issue. And again, we're kind of taking Superman number seven in a vacuum because the art from Ivan Reyes is great. When we're given action scenes, you know, it's limited in terms of his art. Brandon Peterson does most of the heavy lifting in the center section, and he does a pretty passable job as well. But as far as the characterization of these individuals, the aging up of Jonathan Kent was unnecessary, and it just really shows that Brian Michael Bendis didn't want to write for a child character. He wanted to write for somebody that was a teenager. He wanted to create this kind of chaos and shake things up for the sake of shaking things up when it really just limits the potential of the character in the future and to tell great stories. If we're talking about an aged-up Jonathan Kent versus Damian Wayne, I mean, it's a completely different dichotomy. It's, it's a different relationship that's going to be going on with these two characters, which was so great in the Super Sons and Adventures of Super Sons series. And then you've got Lois Lane, and her portrayal seems to be a bit lackluster as well. It feels... Unfortunately, like Brian Michael Bendis is writing inside of his own world versus what we've seen before, but that's not necessarily uncommon for Brian Michael Bendis. If we're talking about Superman as a series, there's a reason that I stopped reading it after the first few issues, and that's because a lot of these things were resonant and they were telegraphed in advance. As soon as John took off with Jor-El and we had the teases of the cover for issue number six, it just made it very clear that nothing about this series was going to speak to what I enjoyed about Peter J. Tomasi, Patrick Leeson, and Mankey's run. It just was not the story for me. When I look at Superman, I see a very different kind of character, and when I enjoy Superman, it's telling very different kind of stories, and a lot of this just feels unfortunately misplaced for somebody of my age and somebody that's not necessarily a Superman fan to begin with. It just doesn't speak to me in that capacity. Uh, I would say that it's something that a lot of people could enjoy, but I wouldn't count me amongst them. But I want to know what you guys think too, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation about what Brian Michael Bendis has done to Superman or what Superman looks like in the future or now, and whether you enjoy it or whether you don't. But as always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.